Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is the second part in my introduction to SQL lesson. This time we are going to start going over joins using W3Schools as a reference so we can demo and test out the code that we're using. And we also have access to sample databases and many visuals so you'll be able to follow along very easily. Just a disclaimer, this should not be the only thing you're using to learn SQL. You need to go out and practice it for yourself. You're not going to learn SQL just from watching videos. You need to practice it and get your skills much better. So right here is our assignment for the week. We're going to go over SQL joins, the inner join, the left join, and right join. And then we're also going to go into the group by statement. So from last week, we went through SQL home, intro, syntax, and then we went from select all the way to aliases. We did all that in the first video. Go check that out already. If you haven't, I'll post the link up right here. So let's get right into joins right here. So what is a join? Basically, a join is when you need to combine data from two or more tables. And in order to do that, you need to have a column between them that it can be joined on. And this join will be based on a related column between the two tables. So if you look at these two columns right here, one of them has order ID, customer ID, and order date. The other one has customer ID, customer name, and contact name. You'll see that the column that they both have in col common, you'll see that the you'll see that the column that they both have in column is customer ID. So we'll be doing this join on the customer ID table so that at the end we'll be able to get the order ID, customer ID, customer name, order date, and contact name. Not necessarily in that order. We can choose the order that will be returned, but we'll get all that information in one location rather than two tables. So there's a few different types of joins. There's the inner join, which is Basically, if we're combining two tables, we are only taking the information that is in both of those tables. So you can see right here, table one and table two, the inner join, you're only returning records that are in both of those tables. Now, inner join, also, you'll see it in SQL syntax as just join. That's why it says inner join. So inner join and a just join right here is both the same things. It's the most common type of join as the most fundamental. It's pretty much like you see Venn diagram, everything in the middle. I love these Venn diagrams because they're very informative and they show you exactly what the join looks like. Now a left join or a left outer join returns all records from the table on the left and then matching records on the right table. So if you see in this diagram, it'll return every single thing in the table on the left and then it'll find the matching records from the table on the right, table two, and join it onto that. Now, I'll, go, I'll get into more detail too as we're actually going through the code. But now, the right outer join is actually the same exact thing as a left join, just flipped. Now we were using table two as the basis and matching that with records from table one. So some certain SQL syntaxes actually don't have right joins because you can just do everything in a right join in a left join and just switch the two tables. But many do have a right join and it is helpful in some situations. Now lastly we have a full outer join which is combining all the records for both tables. Now I know in my SQL they actually don't have syntax for full outer join. Instead you have to do a left join and a right join right after and then use the union all command in the middle. But in most SQL, but in most instances you're allowed to do a full outer join. So let's get more in depth about inner joins. Right here we have our demo database. You can see we're going to be joining on customer ID because that's the column that is in both of the two tables. So this is showing the head of two tables, the order table and the customers table. Now both of these tables have many many rows but we're just showing the top three rows in both of these tables. So let's just say, for the sake of explaining it for the first time, that both of these tables only had three rows. Only these three rows and these three rows. So we will only be returning rows that have the same customer ID in both tables. It's actually not as complicated when you're actually working it out, but let's go through it line by line. So customer ID, you can see customer ID equals two. There's a customer ID of two in the second table. So we're returning this row and this row. Customer ID 37, there's no 37 in both of the tables. Customer ID 77, there's no customer ID 77 in the other table. 
Now on this table, there's no customer ID 1 in this table, and there's no customer ID 3 in this table. So we'll only be returning records where customer ID is 2, because that's the customer ID that is in both of the tables. So now let's try it ourselves. Select orders ID, customer's customer name. From orders, inner join customers on customer ID equals customer ID. So from joins, you're going to take table 1, and you're going to put that in the from statement, from orders. That's the first table that we're looking at. And then we're joining, we're using an inner join with that on the customer's table. So we're pulling from orders, inner joined on the customer table. That's part one of the join. And then we have to say what column we're joining on. So we use the on command, and then we say orders table customer ID equals customer table dot customer ID. And you'll see here are our results right here, 196 records. Now we're going to do an inner join on three tables. So it's important to know the syntax here. And the key to reading this is understanding that each parentheses is a table that has been joined. So when you join two tables, you can create table number three. So when we're joining two tables like this, so you can see right here, we're joining the orders table and the customers table. We're joining the orders table with an inner join on the customers table on customer ID right here. And this becomes our first table because we joined two table to con because we joined two tables to form this table right here. So this table goes in parentheses. Now this table that we just created is being joined again on the shippers table. So we're joining this table right here in parentheses on this table, the shippers table with an inner join on shipper ID equals shipper ID. And then now that table with all three tables joined together becomes another table. And that's represented by these parentheses right here, this one and this one. So first table right here, these two parentheses right here. And then when we add in the third table, it's this one and this one creating all three tables. And if you wanted to do four tables, five tables, six tables, you would just keep adding parentheses. So we're going to go ahead and run. And we're going to now we're going to see the order ID from the orders table, the customer name from the customers table, and the shipper name from the shippers table. So our next join is going to be left joins. So this syntax is exactly the same as inner joins. It's just the only thing you change is from inner join to left join. Now keep in mind, some databases left join is called left outer join. It's the same thing. But you see right here from the Venn diagram, remember, we're returning all the records from the table on the left, table one, and ma finding matching values from table two. If there's no matching value from table two, we will still have that record from table one. There'll just be null values in the corresponding columns from table two. So right here, we're going to do the same join. And you can hear, remember, we had 196 rows from the inner join. Now we have 213 rows because now we have all the customer names, even if they didn't have an order ID, even if they didn't have a corresponding value in the order table, they're going, still going to be returned in our search results. And you'll scroll down right there. See this person right here? Doesn't have any corresponding values for order ID, doesn't have any information in the order table. But his information is still returned. It's just returned as null values. That's why there's more data in this table because we're including people who... That's why there's more data in this table because we're returning all the customers even if they do not have any orders. Now for the left join, you can stack them just like inner joins and join two, three, four, or however many tables you need to. Now back to the right join. In some databases, it's called the right outer join, but it's the same exact thing as the left join. It's just we're now taking all the records from table two and, apply and matching them with records on table one. It's the same exact thing as a left join, except now we're taking all the records from table two and matching them on records from table one. So let's go ahead and test this out. 
So the table on the right is the employees table. So we're returning all values for employees, last name, first name. So we're returning all values for employees, and then we're matching them with any data that they have in the orders table. So like you can see, it's flipped. We're getting, we're returning all the records for employees. And this is ordered by order so you can see there's a null value right here for order ID and it's ordered by order ID so you can see lowest value here which in this case is null so there was no information from the orders table for this employee but it still returned this employee name just no order information because it doesn't exist now just to prove it to you that they're the same thing here we go running this query 197 records with the right join. I'm going to switch it to a left join. I'm going to switch the tables. And there you go again, 197, same exact thing. Just switch the two tables around. Table one becomes table two, table two becomes table one. And that shows you that a right join and left join are actually the same thing. It just depends on your certain circumstances why you would actually need to use right join. And now we're gonna go to the full outer join, which is returning all record from both tables. So if table one has records that are not in table two, they'll show as null values in the table two columns. And if table two has records that are not in table one, those will also show as null values in the table one columns. So most of the times your SQL will support full outer joins, but there are some situations, like if you're using MySQL that do not support full outer joins, it's kind of annoying, but instead you have to do a left join and then a right join. So I just typed it out right here you would do a left join right here and then you would use the union all command and then right afterwards do a right join. Unfortunately I can't expand this anymore but all I did was take the left join union all and then copy this exact thing but just switch it to a right join right here. Make sure there's no semicolon after the first one and the union all command combines the output of both of the queries and that is the equivalent of a full outer join. Now, if you only want it to return distinct rows, it's actually very easy to do it. Instead of using the union all command, you just use the union command, which only returns distinct rows. Very simple, I love it. Now you can see there's only distinct rows returned, 197. And then here we can go to the union page on W3Schools. You can see union, same syntax. This is returning distinct rows by default. To allow duplicate rows, use union all, which is what we did. Now, of course, to use union or union all, you can only use the command if both of the tables that you're using the union for have the same columns. So for this one, they're selecting the city column from customers, and this one, the city column from suppliers. Same column, same name, and that's why the union command works, because it has the same number of columns. So in the SQL, in the query we just ran to, both of the tables that were unionized and had the same columns. If you're having a problem with union, it's probably because the tables you're trying to perform the union on don't have the same columns. Now we're on to the group by function, which is needed for aggregation functions. So if you're ever going to use a function like count, sum, average, or any sort of aggregation function like that, you're going to need to use the group by command because it's telling the query what needs to be grouped together. So you can see from this query right here, we're getting the count of customer IDs by country. A lot of people make the mistake and they put customer ID in the group by, but no, in order to get the number of customer IDs by country, we are grouping by country. So if you need to just say it out loud to yourself, I want to get customer ID by country or by country and state and city whatever but anything that comes after by is going to be in the group by clause so when you think about it that way it's much more simple 
So you can see we're getting the count of customer IDs by country. So let's say we need more detail for this report. We have it by country, but we need it by city too. We would say we would group it by country and city also. So now we're getting customer IDs by country and the city. Let's go ahead and return the city row too. And I'll run that. And now we have the count for country and city of customer IDs. So now we have two different cities in Austria, two different ones in Belgium. And you can add as many columns to the group by clause as you want. Now one last thing is the having clause, which is similar to the where clause. But the difference between that and the where clause is that the having clause works with aggregate functions. So in some situations, you can't use the where clause because it won't work with the aggregated functions we're talking about. So let's say, for instance, for the query we just ran, you only want to return count where customer ID is greater than five. You can't put a where clause right here because it doesn't work with the count function. So you have to use the having clause. I'll show you right here. Run without it, it'll return everything. Then we run it with the having clause, and it's only going to return counts of customer IDs greater than five. Okay? So functions just like the where clause, it's a conditional statement, but you need to use it if you're using the conditional on an aggregate function. Now, one extra bonus thing that I think is very important that I'm going to include anyway is case when statements because you probably see them all the time. And when you first see them, you're just like, what is going on? But what a case when statement does is it adds another column to your table. But what a case when statement does is it adds another column to your query based on conditionals. So what does that mean? You'll see right here. Let's say we have order ID and quantity, but we want it to have another column based on the value in the quantity. So what does that mean? Let's look right here. So let's say your query is returning order ID and quantity from a table, but you want another column that's based on the value in quantity. Say you need to know if the quantity is above 30 or below 30 very quickly. So you want to just have a column for that. So what you would do is use a case one statement because a case one statement builds a column based on conditionals based, that are based on values from another column. So to build the case when statement, you're going to start with case, and then it's going to be when quantity is greater than 30. Then the value in that column is going to say the quantity is greater than 30. <laughs> when the quantity is equal to 30, then it's going to say the quantity is 30. And then if it's anything, and then if it's anything else, the quantity is under 30. So you can see our three conditionals right here, greater than 30, the value is going to say greater than 30. Equal to 30, it's going to say have a text that says is 30. And anything else, which means it's going to be under than 30, the quantity is under 30. And end as quantity text, this is just going to be the name of the column. So let's try this out. So what we're going to get is a third column named quantity text that either has value the quantity is greater than 30, quantity is 30, or quantity is under 30, based on the value in quantity. So run it, and there you go. Quantity is under 30, quantity is under 30, under 30, greater than 30, and there you go. You get the gist, quantity is 30. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this video. Remember to practice, practice your skills. That's gonna be the most important thing. You can't just watch a video and then know how to code. You gotta practice it. Go on W3 schools, test out the queries. Maybe take an online course where there's a module that you'll be able to enter in SQL queries, but find a way to practice writing SQL queries in order to learn how to program you need to program. Before signing out for the day, remember to like and to subscribe for my channel. Many more tutorials coming and a lot more data science related content, a lot more career advice. It's all coming at you. So help me out, like and subscribe, and I'll see you again for another video shortly.